Lord brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of rejoicing. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us enter deeply into the presence of our Heavenly Father, aware of our need for His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen, and clothed with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then, when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin <clears throat> and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows what, that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
the just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who, had, who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so I just made a video about the uh, resurrection. So some of this is going to be uh, things I talked about in that video uh, <clears throat> on uh, proofs for the resurrection. And I... I have to talk about it today in this homily because it's uh, all in these readings. Um, so let's see. First of all, you got Peter and John, the incredible boldness. Uh, the uh, Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, uh, don't know what to do with these guys. Uh, they're befuddled because they know they're just uneducated common men. Uneducated. Agramatoi. They don't have any letters after their name. They're unlettered. Um, <clears throat> ordinary guys. And here they are with this incredible boldness. I mean, they're just astounded. Uh, and it's undeniable what happened. They cured this guy and everybody saw it. There's all these eyewitnesses. So there's nothing for it. Uh, they can't punish them. Uh, but they're just the amazement of the Sanhedrin has a ring of authenticity about it. Uh, bear in mind that uh, this is only weeks, weeks after uh, these events went down, occurred, the uh, Paschal mystery of Jesus. His passion, death, resurrection, and ascension had just occurred. So this is not some remote time, in some faraway place, uh, where the facts are kind of shadowy and uh, sketchy. And uh, No, it's right at ground zero. Uh, chronologically and geographically proximate to these events, the Christ event. Um, the Paschal mystery of our Lord uh, is fresh in everybody's mind, and the tomb is empty. Uh, so they're preaching the resurrection right in the temple, uh, only weeks uh, after these events occurred, and uh, there's nothing they can do about it. Um, <clears throat> And there's signs accompanying their preaching that are undeniable and indisputable. It's right there. Uh, plenty of eyewitnesses saw what happened. Uh, so that's why later on when the apostles are brought in, Gamaliel says, look, just leave these guys alone. If this isn't from God, uh, it's just going to die out like so many other movements that have arisen in Israel. It'll just kind of die out like... I don't know, he doesn't say this, but kind of like John the Baptist's ministry. I mean, he was a rock star, John St. John the Baptist. But he was put to death. But he didn't rise from the dead in a glorified, incorruptible body. Okay, And his movement, basically in about a generation, just fizzled out. Uh, <clears throat> whereas this ministry of the apostles just grows exponentially. Because um, it's entirely different, it's categorically different, different, and that's what Gamaliel realizes and says, "Don't, don't try to stop this. Just let it die out on its own. If it's of God, you're going to find yourself fighting God." I find that so interesting that this amazing 
A famous rabbi would say that uh, in front of the whole Sanhedrin. Um, <clears throat> so now we can look back at the gospel and see that these men who are so bold, Peter and John, before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 3, here they are, they're mourning, they're weeping, they're full of unbelief and hardness of heart. Uh, and they don't believe Mary Magdalene. They think it's an idle tale when she and the other women come. Ah, in Luke's gospel, they're like, it's just an idle tale, okay? They don't believe them. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke are mentioned here very succinctly in Mark's gospel as well. They come with their testimony of having witnessed the risen Lord, seen him and encountered him, and they don't believe them either. So does this sound like guys who are going to pull off some kind of black ops, um, um, this incredible, uh, far-fetched idea that these guys um, who are just acting in an all-too-human fashion here, they're in a state of total shock. These events are, that transpired, uh, they did not expect. Okay, so they're reeling in shock from the events of the Paschal Mystery, which weren't part of their plan. This is not what they planned. John and James, you know, look, can we sit at your right hand and at your left in your glory? We want to share in this incredible glory and everybody, the triumphant entry. I mean, they're just like on this riding this euphoric wave of triumph when our Lord enters with the uh, palms and everybody shouting Hosanna. And to go from that to a few days later, a week later, he is uh, in the tomb. And these guys are shattered. Their world is coming apart. This is a total personal catastrophe for the apostles. So the thought that they went in there and stole the body from a guard of at least 16 soldiers on edge in the middle of this hostile, volatile environment of the Passover in Jerusalem when these events just went down and the city's in an uproar. My hunch is there were more than 16 guys there. Uh, I think they would have put even more troops there, more soldiers there to make sure there's not some attempt to steal that body. Uh, just to guarantee an overwhelming force there uh, that could handle some band of apostles. Okay, These guys are not trained cadres. They're just fishermen, most of them, a bunch of them. I mean, they're just... They were shattered, and they're not going to suddenly launch this black ops mission to um, um, steal the body and formula, reformulate some, some hoax uh, that uh, we're going to steal the body and proclaim him as risen, and we're going to keep this thing going. No, 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 no. That, that's really far-fetched. Okay, these guys are in a state of shock, total shock and disbelief. And hardness of heart. And they're, in Mark's gospel here, they're described as just mourning and weeping. These guys are not going to steal the body. Okay, that is just really, really absurd to even imagine uh, that they're going to do that. That's the origin of Christianity, a hoax. They stole the body. Okay, the resurrection is a historical fact. It's impossible to deny it, the catechism says. Read paragraph 643. It's exactly what the catechism says. It's impossible to deny it. These guys are acting in a fallen human way, um, and that has a certain flavor of realism about it that I particularly appreciate that the apostles here are acting in a consistent manner with the, um, you know, the immature way they've acted all throughout the Gospels. It's all there for us to see that these men are just like us. Okay, and, um, and they're acting in a way that's totally understandable and relatable to um, <clears throat> in, uh, in this unbelief. They're skeptical and incredulous uh, because of this astounding nature of the resurrection. They did not expect this. Even though our Lord told them this, he was going to raise. They didn't un rise from the dead. They didn't understand. And they were afraid to ask any more questions. They just didn't get it. It didn't register with them what our Lord was going to do. 
They couldn't catch up to these events in their own minds. It was unfolding before them, and they're in a state of shock and disbelief. All too human. So the accounts of the resurrection, to me, have that ring of truth about them. Uh, why would the apostles, if they're fabricating this hoax, this story to to seduce the world into believing their Messiah had risen from the dead. Why would the first witnesses be Mary Magdalene and these other women when their testimony was not even considered uh, worthy of a courtroom? Women's testimony at the time. Why would the first witnesses of the resurrection uh, be recorded here as having been women? The apostles' reaction. Ah, it's just an idle tale. It was all too human. That attitude people had towards women, that in itself is another interesting factoid here that uh, lends credibility to the whole story. They're just telling us the honest truth about Jesus and about what happened. It has that ring of truth about it because it's a historical fact that the catechism says is impossible to deny. Together, let us offer our prayers for the needs of the church and the world. For the church of Christ, may the power of the Holy Spirit work through her in proclaiming the good news and the mercy of God in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians throughout the world persecuted for their faith, may God uphold and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and vulnerable in the world, may God lift them to lives free from suffering and fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit grant us grace in our lives and joy in our mission of proclaiming the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be united with the saints in heaven, giving glory to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parishioners here at Ascension, for whom I'm offering today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, confident in your mercy and filled with faith and hope in the promise of Easter joy, we ask that you hear our prayers through your Son, Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you. 
But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Uh, just one brief announcement. Uh, this coming week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the sanctuary floor is going to be polished. So I will not have access to the sanctuary. So I will not be recording Mass Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of this upcoming week. Have a good day, everyone. Happy Easter, and the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.